Today, we are going to sign in with Apple and specifically sign in with Apple in native mobile applications. Now, there's a couple of benefits to that. Obviously, they don't have to, you know, create a new account, your users um, makes it a lot easier. Security is also a concern there. Now, another crucial thing is that when you're building native applications to be listed in um, the iOS store, actually, uh, you will need to provide sign in with Apple as an option. Uh, if you actually have some, you know, third party social login services, you will also need to provide sign in with Apple. Otherwise, you probably won't get approved to be listed in the App Store. So pretty crucial here. Now, there's various different ways we can build um, native applications. So we have uh, Flutter examples here, Swift um, as well. But specifically, uh, today, I want to focus on building with um, React Native uh, using Expo uh, specifically. And the neat thing here is with Expo, um, we can actually test um, this application. Um, so when we're using Expo Go, uh, we can actually test it without needing um, an Apple developer account, which is quite neat. But um, later on, when we, you know, uh, move the app to production, and want to list it on the App Store, uh, we will need a developer account to generate kind of our unique app ID and such. But when we're um, testing with Expo Go, uh, it's quite convenient um, that we don't have to do that. So uh, we'll be using this uh, Expo Apple authentication library, uh, which is really neat. And then we can um, use um, the sign in with ID token uh, in Superbase Auth uh, to create kind of the account within uh, Superbase Auth. Now, um, we just need to follow kind of the um, Expo official Expo docs here. Um, so this only works for iOS and the um, iOS simulator. Uh, and then for Android and web, we kind of need to implement um, this separately. Uh, for web, we can also do um, sign in with OAuth. So Apple also has an OAuth flow. But uh, for the native applications, we want to use the native flow. So let's kick this off by creating uh, a new Expo project. Now there's this handy create uh, Expo app, uh, but we want to use um, TypeScript. So for TypeScript, we can use this handy um, template uh, blank TypeScript uh, project here. Uh, and then we need to provide our name. We're going to call it Apple Auth. Uh, and now we're loading the template uh, for usage with TypeScript, installing our dependencies. And now we are ready to go. So we're just going to go into our Apple Auth project. Uh, and let's open this up in um, VS Code. Uh, here and now what we can do is um, we can fire this up with npm run uh, iOS uh, and we'll then uh, open this up in the uh, iOS uh, simulator here and let's move this side by side so we can see this uh, app.tsx to start so here's our app um, dot TSX, very nice, and actually kind of up, updates in real time, which is quite nice. Um, okay, so what we want to do now is to uh, add our Apple authentication. Um, so we're just following the installation and configuration instructions here. Uh, let's open up a new terminal. We say npx expo install um, the expo authentication um, package here. And then what we need to do is we need to uh, configure our um, app config. So first of all, in our app.json, um, we need to use Apple Pay sign in. So here for under iOS, we add the option use Apple Pay uh, sign in. Uh, and then also for the um, EAS built locally, we need to add um, the plugins. So um, this is here within our expo. We'll just move it to the end here. Plugins, um, you have that safe. Okay, so now what we can do is um, 
yeah, we're pretty much ready to use this. So we can go back to our docs, uh, and use kind of the uh, example here. So we'll actually create a new uh, component, we can call it auth.native.tsx. Um, because this only works in native applications, and then uh, we can create a separate component for um, for uh, the web, for example, which we then just call auth.txs. Um, but so let's create a new components folder and then say auth.native.tsx. Um, and uh, we'll just paste this in here. Uh, so we don't have Superbase loaded in yet. We'll do that uh, a little bit later. Um, what we'll do for now is just we'll comment this out, we'll come back to that. Um, so for now, we just have our Apple authentication button here. Um, we pass in some styling, uh, we need to um, pass a width and height for the button to actually show up. Uh, and then we're just calling sign in um, async, we pass in the scope, we want the full name, the email. Uh, and then we're just logging out um, the console log, the credentials. Okay, so let's go back to this and import um, our uh, auth component. So from uh, components slash auth, uh, we can say auth. Uh, and we just need to, uh, I think, yeah, that's the thing. If we're doing this auth native, um, we need to have uh, also an auth dot um, tsx uh, file. And uh, what we can do is just um, export a function auth. So this is kind of in the case of um, you know, not not native. So like, if you're, you know, doing expo web, for example, uh, and then we can just do uh, maybe uh, import this. Uh, and then we just say, uh, return a few, um, we'll do some styles container. Yeah, let's just copy kind of this whole thing. Um, here, we'll call it auth. And we'll remove the status bar. And then we just say um, to do web auth, for example, something like that. Um, yeah. And so I think now we're Auth. Um, great. So now we have our auth component. Um, and then we just put it in here. Auth. Uh, auth. And give that a save. And so now we have our um, sign in with Apple button um, on uh, yeah, yeah, platform iOS because we're running on iOS. Um, and so we can now say this. So this is a nice thing here, we can actually hide um, our email address, uh, password, and then we can continue with the password, um, paste it in here, sign in. Uh, and so now once the sign in is completed, uh, we get our credential here. Um, we can actually see we get our name, you know, and the email which we uh, requested. Um, and then we have this identity token. And so the identity token is what we'll use to um, finish the, the sign up with Superbase auth. Um, but now let's just copy this for now, uh, and put this into jwt.io to have a look. So because this identity token is uh, literally just a, a JWT. So we can see this here. Um, we can see the email, uh, which is masked. Um, and uh, what's important here, we can see the uh, audience. So this is host.expo. Um, exponent. So this is the app ID of Expo Go. Um, and this is actually what allows us to do the testing um, 
here without you know registering our own uh, app ID. So in test mode, um, when testing with Expo Go, uh, we can use this. And so what we now need to do is we need to register this as an authorized client ID in our Superbase account. Now, uh, I actually want to develop um, locally here. So I actually want to do um, Superbase in it. So I can um, use Superbase locally here. So I got my Superbase folder and my config.toml. Uh, and what I can do is now I can enable um, the Apple auth here. So I could just say enabled true. Uh, then I need to pass my client IDs. So um, here the Expo Go client ID. And then later on when I register my own um, client ID, uh, for example, you know, it's a reverse URL scheme. So my URL is thor.bio. Um, yeah, just do bio.thor.app here um, for my app later when I move it into production. Uh, and then, so the secret here is not needed for um, uh, for native auth. So this is only needed if you're also doing OAuth for the web flow, for example. Uh, so I'll just do a dummy value in here for now. Uh, and then what we can do is Superbase start. Uh, so start up our local Superbase stack, um, which is really neat. Great. So now we're running here on localhost uh, 54321. Uh, what's also super awesome is that we have a local studio that we can use with kind of all our SQL editor tables. Um, but we're looking at auth here. So later, once everything was successful, we will see our auth user pop up here. Uh, and so next, what we will need to do is um, install Superbase um, JS. We'll be using our Superbase uh, JS. Uh, we'll need to install it. Um, npm install Superbase. Uh, and then we can look into initializing and specifically we want to do React Native uh, with async storage. Now, uh, async storage is not encrypted. So if you want kind of in production a more uh, secure um, version, so you want to encrypt the user session data, um, you can use kind of this combination here of async storage and secure storage and um, AES encryption. So um, you can take a look at that. But um, for ease of use, we're just going to do um, this one here. We'll copy that down. We'll go to our auth um, component, auth native here. Now, um, yeah, ideally we uh, we can put that into kind of a separate um, component. I'll just pop it in here for now. Um, and we still need to install a couple of things. So we'll need to um, npm install this uh, URL polyfill here, uh, and then also our uh, async storage. So let's install these two um, dependencies. And then in the meantime, um, we can set up our client here. Um, so we can find our we can run Superbase status at any time to get our um, credentials. So the API is running just here on localhost. So that is our API URL. And then we'll need our um, public anon key. So again, the anon key is public, the service role key is, is secret. So that one you can't put in um, your uh, native applications. Um, so the ser service role key only use on a server, the anon key and your Superbase URL. Um, you know, these are fine to be exposed in your project. And so now what we can do is uh, here. So if we have our identity token, uh, what we can then do is we can say Superbase auth sign in with ID token. We say the provider is Apple and we need to pass along the identity token. And then we're really just um, outputting any error or user that we get here. So maybe let's reset that. And so now we sign in, continue with password, paste it in, sign it, um, 
sign in. And so we'll get our um, credentials logged out. And so now shortly after, um, as we're completing this, so great, we don't have any error. And now we have a user with a user ID here. And so now if we go back to our um, localhost dashboard, uh, give that a refresh, we can now see we have our user with our user ID here. Um, and we have the email, which is um, the private email uh, relay from Apple um, here as well. So perfect. This is kind of end, end to end implemented now. So the only thing is once you're moving off from um, uh, locally, uh, testing locally with Expo Go. Um, as I mentioned, you will need to uh, have your own app ID and sign uh, your application with that app ID, and then also register that in um, the Apple provider config settings. So I have a project here, I can show you this as an example. So in uh, auth providers, you go to Apple, uh, you enable this, and then these are only needed for all auth. Um, so if you're doing all auth on, on web, as well, you can do that. But otherwise, just a comma separated list of um, your app IDs, and then you can switch your keys to uh, your hosted, uh, your, your super base uh, credentials uh, here to your um, hosted project URLs, and uh, you're ready to go. So this is it. Um, this now you're ready to release your app on the iOS App Store. Uh, thanks for tuning in and see you next time.